now. Mm. Um, the full uh, capital of JCC, that's wonderful news. It is, it is. And uh, mm. what we're trying to do is we're trying to take it another step further by producing for the restaurants right here in Kuwait during the seasons that uh, it allows us to. We That's have wonderful. nine months out of the year. Okay. Where it's Doctor, the Doctor Dr. Yunus, right here, he has some kind of intervention. What is it? And, uh, our first, good evening. <laughs> Ms. Dana, how are you doing? Um, it was, it's nice to have you on the, on the show and we could talk. Uh, just my quick question. What, it, uh, what is the classification of organic or what do you guys use in Kuwait to uh, generally to say this is organic? Where is the threshold of what's organic? Do you, can you give us a little... Uh, kind of simple explanation what just sure sure um, we are not organic and I think it's very hard for um, any uh, commercial farmer in Kuwait to say that they are organic because we don't have an organic body in Kuwait uh, to come and actually um, check on you and make sure that you're following the correct formulas to be certified organic uh, what people can claim to say in Kuwait is that they do not use pesticides or herbicides um, and they're growing clean clean uh, a home farm or, uh, you know, your backyard, yes, you can possibly uh, get to become organic. Uh, but unfortunately, it's very hard to get to that process in place. Okay. Uh, people uh, tend to forget to wash the vegetables and we also uh, try to teach the children to wash it twice and three times before they eat it. So you're still using the toxic chemicals to grow bigger uh, vegetables in the state of Kuwait, just like they do it in Europe and the rest of the world, or not? Uh, I'm happy to say that we don't at all, and um, I hope I hope that most farms in Kuwait don't use that. But the, the, the question to ask is, where are the seeds from? Are they genetically modified seeds, or are they organic seeds? Uh, for us in Sadir Farms, we're happy to say that we use uh, organic seeds, and uh, they're in their natural form, they haven't been manipulated. And um, the washing of the vegetables is extremely important because, uh, you know, it's out in the open. It can be, uh, there could be a thousand things in it. What I like to do to keep it as clean as possible is to, um, to add a little bit of uh, vinegar and to have them uh, just sit and soak for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Who has the time to leave the vegetables in, in, the, in the bowl 15 minutes? But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. Dana Tarak al Mtawa, Managing Director of Choir and fire manager in Sadir Farms. That was wonderful. Thank you very much. Doctor, back to you. And uh, she helped us honestly a lot about the organic food and clarified that there is not enough criteria to, you know, label this organic or Which well, I was telling you earlier that you, I know. you could buy things very expensively thinking organic if you don't you know. You satisfied on that or not? Well, uh, that's what I just told you. Uh -huh. uh, you cannot, if you're going to add, the, so I am as a public uh, communicator at the, the, the university level, I teach students, I teach the public, I go out, talk. Uh, what is my primary objective? Mm. Do I want people to eat more fruits and vegetables, which we have a problem? In today's world, we eat less fruits and vegetables. They hate they the should. bowl of salad. They but go straight to the rice and chicken. And so stuff when I like say that. organic, uh, and people start having a hard time getting the stuff, and then feel pressured, and then they have enough money, or you know, it's, it's very expensive to buy fruits and vegetables, let alone organic. And there is no one standard even for organic. So which one is more important? If today I tell you, if you were to choose between organic, will there more fruits and vegetables? Which one do you think is better message? Which one? You're it's talking to me at the same time, lots of people talking in my ear. But anyway, uh, I, ha I have a question for you. A uh, pregnant woman try to avoid some certain meals okay. and certain food. And, you know, the mothers of the pregnant woman, you need to eat more. They, you know, advise on her, you right. need to eat more because you're losing weight, because you're eating for not your body, you're eating for the baby inside of your stomach and, and etc. So what's your uh, suggestions I mean, and advice? I see patients on, about pregnancy all the time, right? And uh, first we know what their pre-pregnancy weight. If, we, if they're overweight or obese, there is a specific range of weight, uh -huh. not to worry about it. So really they don't have to gain a lot of weight. If they're overweight or obese, they just have to gain anywhere between seven to 11, 12 kilos only. Total throughout the whole pregnancy. The pregnancy. The whole pregnancy. That she might if get they're over overweight, 12 kilos. If they're overweight or obese, yes, they range from that 7 to 12. They shouldn't gain like 20, mm -hmm. 30, mm -hmm. because th that's not needed. They have enough energy, we just okay. made sure. Do you have kids? Yes, I do. I have kids too. And we love it when we see the kids are eating too much. But honestly, we are, you know, 
uh, put them in, in harm's way, in danger by, uh, you know, advocating to you need to eat more to gain more power. And this is wrong. Of course. You need to stay away from the snacks, such as, you know, lots of uh, chocolate and candies and, you know, donuts and stuff like that. What exactly you need to tell the parents to do with their kids as far as nutrition is so, concerned? Uh, the programs we design for kids are centered around the family and then the kid. Mm -hmm. So the family needs to be educated, needs to be aware of the amounts that the kid needs because maybe an adult thinks this is little and I should give them more, while a child should eat a specific amount. And the best research shows that you should let kids serve the amount for themselves. You should not serve them the amount. So if you put it, you should ask them, Do want more know. or less? Uh -huh. If it starts early, they have the right messages in their brain they could choose and if they want more they could get more mm -hmm. also i show them varieties i should always put on the uh, on the plate you know on, on the table a lot of food choices and uh, as a family you have to have that supporting environment i can't eat over all the time, and bring doctor it. honestly what about in schools because it's it's not a, they are not under our supervision they can go to the cafeteria and eat the worst food in the world I mean, you, it has to start from somewhere. It starts from home first. Uh -huh. it's, a, how much, it's like you tell your kids, don't do this. There is a high chance they don't do it if you have followed through your whole life. Uh, but you can't blame everything just outside. Yes, there is a, uh, an influence outside. But mm -hmm. if we give them the right messages, teach them correctly, then when they go out to school, they could make better choices. Not always, it's not a black and white. No, it's but not. But you want them to make Dr. better Samin, choices. Dr. Samin, I'm not satisfied. You have to come back here and tell us more about that. Thank you, How thank about you. It? Well, maybe next time, definitely. Honestly, definitely thank you so much, this. Dr. Thank Yunus you. Salmin. He works at Kuwait University, a faculty member, all about nu nutrition and a lot more. Thank you very much for having me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the program for tonight. We hope that we gave you all the information you need about the nutrition, food, and also obesity. Tune again once again next week at the same time, Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Until then, good night. Bye-bye.